Hi everyone. It seems a long while since I've sat here and spoken to you. <laughs> what I wanted to do today was introduce the video you're about to see. But before that, I must give a big hello and welcome to any new subscribers that are watching. It's great to have you along and thanks for supporting the channel. So today's video was filmed earlier in the year Jasmine and I went on a trip to Northumbria in the camper van for a few days and we specifically went to visit a property called Cragside which is now a National Trust property. It was the home of Lord Armstrong who was an industrialist and arms manufacturer and it was very advanced at the time it was built with the technology that it had in it. <laughs> And you'll see that in the film. We had an horrendous journey to get up to Northumbria. The weather was absolutely awful. It didn't stop raining. It just poured and poured and poured down. So we were very sort of dampish. Although we were in the van <laughs> when we got to this site, it was not particularly appealing <laughs> given the weather that had uh, come beforehand. I'll just say a little bit about Jasmine. I've not seen much of her recently because she has been away looking after a relative who had a full knee replacement and before that she had a sister over from America for two months and she felt she couldn't leave her alone and with that and hopping down to London to look after a sister and working in between on the Saturdays and so forth we've just not seen a lot of each other. <laughs> so. That's where Jasmine has been, sort of um, busy doing other things, unfortunately. Anyway, I hope you enjoy what you're about to see. It is mainly a look around the house and the grounds. The grounds are quite extensive. And there's a few interesting items you're going to see well ahead of their time. Enjoy. Hi, and thanks for joining me. This map gives the relative positions of Yelvertoft Marina and Cragside. We stayed at a campsite in Bellingham, about 24 miles away. I'm just leaving Yelvertoft. I'm on my way to pick up Jasmine. We're having a few days away in the camper van. I'm really looking forward to it. We've arrived at the campsite after an horrendous journey on the motorway, including a break. It took us over five and a half hours and we had heavy rain nearly all the way. The driving conditions were really atrocious. This is where we're about to park for the night. We're staying here for two nights at this campsite. This is the following morning, a bit dull, but it did brighten up, thankfully. Hi everyone, we're in Northumberland, we're on our way to see Cragside, which is the house of the inventor and arms manufacturer, Lord Armstrong. This house was built in Victorian times, in the late 19th century, and it was well advanced. It uses hydroelectricity power, hydraulics. It was a house well ahead of its time. And I've been wanting to see it for so many years, I just can't tell you how many. So today, we're finally going to get to see it. So I'm really looking forward to it. Jasmine likewise. We're both excited to come and see this house. As I say, I've wanted to see it for so long. Well, we've just arrived. Just need to find our way to the car park. It's quite exciting. 
this off now. Crikey, it's 21 pounds to come in here. And Dad remembers. In fact, the top up membership I'm paying for Jasmine to be part of my membership is just over 21 pounds. And that lasts until October. Just trying to find our membership cards. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Grand. Would you yes, please. Yeah, Thanks very much so. Much. Thank you very yes. much. Have you been to Crackside before? No. First time here. Um, so your best bet is probably to park up at the formal gardens. The uh, the main car park bays are maybe a little bit too small okay. for you. Just been told to park at the formal gardens because the parking spaces in the main car park are small for camper vans. It means we're going to have more of a walk. So the house is over there somewhere. What we were looking at just now were just the outbuildings, <laughs> and they were pretty impressive. That's it. Catch up with you later. Well, we've parked up and we're just now making our way down to find the house. It's a bit of a walk, not really too clear where we're going. We have been given a map with lots of footpaths shown, but it's not very clear. This is a very large pump out operation. Imagine doing that on your boat. The house is just coming into view now. We're on the final approach to the house now, <laughs> coming up the carriage drive. The house was developed from a small hunting lodge in the 1860s and has a mix of styles including Tudor revival. In fact, I find it very difficult to describe. The architect Richard Norman Shaw was a significant character in its development, making various alterations and additions over a 15 year period. I've always found the domestic side of historic houses very interesting. The ingenuity of the Victorians in particular was quite something. An example here being the hydraulically powered rotisserie.
This is the equipment that operated a hydraulic passenger lift which was installed in the house between 1870 and 1880. It worked from the basement up to second floor level, total height of about 30 feet, 9.1 meters. It was mainly used by the domestic staff to take coal to the open fires in rooms on the upper floors. making our way upstairs now. <laughs> These tiles are quite a feature. All the corridors seem to be lined with them.
go again. <laughs> The drawing room is dominated by this two-storey Inglenook fireplace, so massive that it was built into the hillside to support its reputed ten tons. It is extravagantly decorated with cherubs and swags of fruit and was carved from Italian marbles, alabaster and onyx. I was mightily impressed with what we saw. The house was just what I was expecting. I've so long looked forward to coming here and to finally see it is quite wondrous for me. <laughs> so I'm a happy bunny. <laughs> yeah, it was wonderful, absolutely wonderful, very impressive. Got to be very careful here, it's very slippy. Lovely is that. I've left Jasmine to wait for me. The path is a bit treacherous and she was a bit worried about going any further. So I'm making my way now to the powerhouse. I'm told by someone I just spoke to that it isn't much further. Can't see it yet though. <laughs> Well, the powerhouse is in sight now, so I'll soon be there. Cragside was the first house in the world to be lit by hydroelectricity. It was the second house to use incandescent light bulbs, invented by Joseph Swan, his own house being the first. The Burnfoot powerhouse was the second built on the estate in 1886 to cope with increasing demand for electricity. Two new lakes were built on high ground. Pressurised water descended 104 metres through cast iron pipes to the powerhouse and drove a turbine connected to a dynamo, which converted the mechanical energy into electricity, used to light the incandescent light bulbs. I'm making my way back now to collect Jasmine as it were. 
It's a shame she missed that, but uh, these things can't be helped. Hiya, sweetheart. You okay? Yes, indeed, yeah. Oh, excellent, excellent. <laughs> We're making our way down to the Iron Bridge. It's not far to go now. Well, we've nearly finished our trip looking at Cragside. We're on the way back to the van now. Just one more thing to look at as we go out. And that will be it. In fact, are we going in the right direction? I'm beginning to ask myself. This is what we're looking for. Fresh spring water collected in a tank in the roof of the pump house was pumped up to a basin 8 metres above the house using the hydraulic engine seen here. It was powered using a head of water from the man-made Tumbleton Lake. Water was gravity fed to the house from the basin for use in the kitchen and bathrooms and also powered the hydraulic passenger lift, the roasting spit and the fire hydrant system. Archimedes screws are normally used to raise water from one level to another. By using them in reverse, a head of water, in this instance from the lake, will turn the screw and drive a generator to produce electricity. Length and diameter of the screw is determined by expected flow rates and the height of the fall. At optimum performance it will generate 12 kilowatts of electricity and none at all in a dry period. The electricity produced will run all the lights in the house but not other electrical items. Have you had a good day? Yeah. Very good day. Very, Very good day. Very informative. I wish I could live in there. Yes, but it's lovely. It's just a dream, isn't it? I can dream, can't I? I know it's not. Well, here we are, back at the van. We just puffed up the hill. So we're both a bit worn out. Yes, <laughs> we are. We've done our 6,000 steps. Yeah, we've done nearly three miles of walking, which is quite good. We're yes. pleased with that. It's normally should be 9,000. Well, it's, they say 10,000, but someone told us recently, if you're over 60, oh, that 6,000 steps is recommended. So we've been uh, exempt from the 10,000. Exempt from the 10,000. Well, we we've done to... over 6,000, so we've done our bit today already, and we're not finished yet. And maybe being 60 isn't, over 60 isn't too bad. No. Well, we met each other. But concession ticket, free prescription oh, yes. and a few other bits. It's here. normally £21 to come in here so I'm glad I'm a member or that we're members I should say. Thanks to you. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye for now. Many thanks for watching. Please look after yourselves, your friends and families. Take the utmost care. If you haven't yet done so, please do think about subscribing. Until next time, bye for now.